Ooh, I cannot wait to trade this week because we've got a big one this week. First, we got Japan, China. I'm going to catch up on those. Then we've got the Federal Reserve. We're going to touch on those. And we got to touch Bitcoin. You know what? Let's go ahead and get Bitcoin out of the way because there's a little bit of an interesting trend that I've been watching on Bitcoin. And I think it's worth you paying a little bit of attention to it as well. Uh, you see it on the hour chart for Bitcoin. And we're getting a little stuck at a certain spot. You ready for this? I want you to pay attention to this. If you don't have this line drawn yet, I drew this line over this weekend. It was yesterday morning I drew this line, probably somewhere over here. I was kind of noticing that we were kind of ceiling -ing -ing. I like to call it ceiling -ling, ling 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 When it's kind of like you got one of those sloped ceilings. It's like, ha, huh, that is bizarre. So I drew this line, boom, boom, and then kind of that ceiling over here. Extended this. What literally happened over the last couple hours here? We bounce almost perfectly off that line. Uh, you're going to have to just believe me on this. I drew that line before it bounced on that line. Okay. You're just going to have to believe that. Uh, but even if you didn't, pay attention to this. What is that a sign of? It's on the one hour, a short term sign of potentially a downtrend for BTC. Now, ooh, I don't want to come across as a crypto bear. Why is this happening? It is a risk off. It is an early warning sign of the week that we have ahead. Now, there is some enthusiasm. Consider the following. Japan is finally expected to raise rates out of the negative territory. This is going to be a big move. They're going to go from ridiculously accommodative uh, to slightly not. <laughs> like 0.1% not. Like imagine having the Fed rate at 0.1% and everybody freaking out because you went from negative to positive. Of course, today, like just about an hour ago, uh, they came out and said, Bank of Japan to conduct unscheduled bond buying operation, which basically lowers market yields. They're flooding liquidity of $20 billion, American dollars, it's like 3 trillion yen. That sounds big, but it's $20 billion. Uh, into the economy, into markets, reverse repos, basically. Uh, so banking system and such. Right before they go to slightly restrictive because they're like, oh, it's a big week. We don't want to break anything. Let's tiptoe around. And they're going to go positive. Like 90% of economists are expecting that. So that's kind of kind of a good news, you know, neutral good news. What do we have in uh, uh, China going on, though? In China, you've got uh, retail sales coming in better than expected. 5.5% versus the 5.2% for January, Feb combined retail sales. This is actually some optimism for China. Makes you wonder, is China, you know, uh, hitting that little curvature, curvature? Who knows? Now, a trading this week, Japan, China, Bitcoin aside, everybody's going to be nervous about Fed J-Pow. Why? Well, but this is Fed J Pow week. Of course, everybody's going to be nervous about Fed J Pow. What do you think we do? This is the point. We're literally, I take this sticker right here. This sticker. You know what's on this sticker? Uh, there you go. Go to the link down below to make sure you get life insurance in as little as five minutes by going to metkevin.com slash life. Get yourself up to 20 free stocks with Weeble. Oh, it went non blurry. 20 free stocks with Weeble, metkevin.com slash Weeble. That's met, M-E-T. Uh, and, and then, of course, pitch alerts. Oh, yeah, and the event. Basically, I'm going to send out my trading alerts this week for those of you in the Stocks and Psychology Money group. Obviously, we're going to plan these in the course member live stream. And we have the event June 21st to 23rd. Hey, look at that. We consolidated all of the pitches right there. Sorry. The point is, we, we have a list of catalysts coming up. It's not just the event or the fact that you need to get your life insurance and Weeble and all this stuff in order. Uh, let's look at the catalyst. You know, everybody was kind of mind blown, but a lot of people send me messages. They're like, it actually was just like three minutes to sign up for life insurance. It's crazy. Metkevin.com slash life. It's what Lauren and I use. Okay, so catalyst this week. Honestly, outside of Fed, eh, early part of the week. Kind of boring. We're going to get building permits. Big deal. That's Tuesday morning. That's when the Fed meeting starts. Uh, Monday morning, we'll get uh, New York Fed services. Obviously, I'll be live. Stock market open live stream. You're always welcome to be there. 525 AM California time. Housing starts. Uh, we'll get those Tuesday morning with the building permits. Expecting 2% growth on month-over-month -month building permits and 7.4% growth on housing starts. Probably because prices have stayed <coughs> high. Anyway. Okay, uh, summer surgery is Wednesday. Whew, I, I want to go visit her, but I'm a smidge under the weather, weather still. Uh, a little bit of that lingering cough, so I'm like, there's no way in hell I'm going to go visit a preemie right before her surgery. So we've got family visiting with her. 
but it still breaks my heart not to be able to be there before. But I can't do that to her. You know, it'd be selfish of me. Anyway, uh, Fed meetings obviously on the 20th. The 20th uh, will be 11 a.m. We are going to get the summary of economic projections. Now, I'm going to tell you what they're going to do here. It's not going to be maybe uh, particularly as bad as people uh, suspect. That's why we're going to strategize on this. And I'm going to explain that. Uh, then we've got, obviously, the presser 30 minutes later. We'll go through that. That'll be about an hour and a half. The next day, we'll get initial jobless claims. We'll get PMIs. j already going to know what those jobless claims and PMIs are. So, <coughs> excuse me. Maybe he'll tell us a little bit about it. But what do I actually think as far as the Fed meeting here? All right, let's be clear. I do not think that the Federal Reserve can rug us. So we're going to write down some things here, okay? I don't think we're going to get a rug. No rug. Uh, I think the reason you don't want to get a rug is I think you got to give it to the market slowly to prevent breaking something because if you break something, you have to cut sooner. So you don't want to cut super soon and you don't want to break something. Boom. Okay. Look at that. So how do you translate that into a number? Okay. So what I think they're going to do is they're going to slowly and softly pop up and bump that summary of economic projections fed rate a little bit. Think about this clearly for a moment. If they go too aggressive this week and crash the market, they break something. Maybe a bunch of banks start going bankrupt or something. This is <laughs> this is like the opposite of what the Federal Reserve wants. So you can't do that. You can't go ridiculously hawk this week. So you don't want to go mega bear on the Fed. You go mega bear on CPI days and it's staying sticky. Well, we just had that. That's why we had the February numbers and things went red for a little bit, right? What you really want as a Fed is just to slowly start making people go, huh, it, the, the rate cut trajectory is actually slightly going up. It's not going down. In other words, we're not thinking we're going to get four or five or six or seven rate cuts. The Fed originally told us they're going to give us three rate cuts. Now what are they telling us? I think they're going to make this very, very simple. They're going to go with something that implies two rate cuts. Again, why are they going to do that? I want to be very clear. They're going to probably move this to about 4.8. Why don't they just go all the way to five? Well, because if they do that, again, they risk breaking something and then they're forced to cut. They don't want to do that. So they manipulate you. They cook you like the frog in the pot and boil you and simmer you and lie to your face about flexible leverage inflation targeting. I'm not better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, damn it. So, uh, uh, what, what do we end up getting? Okay. A calendar. It's very, very simple. What do we have? March. SEP meeting. No cuts. May. No cuts. June. What are they going to give us over here? Over here, they're going to go to two projected cuts. So, they're going to go from three to two. In June, <coughs> they give us a SEP again. Because one month later... They could actually start cuts if they wanted to without a summary of economic projections meeting. Why not use that September uh, or, or sorry, the summary of economic projections for June and forecast one cut. And then in July, you cut and pause. And then you basically go, I don't know. Are we going to cut in December or are we not? <laughs> so what does this mean for long growth stocks and, you know, the stocks that are essentially high interest rate resilient. Is he going to get a really big crash? Pro probably not. Are you going to get some kind of pullbacky doodle? Probably. Are we setting up for the big one? Probably not. Uh, not yet. Not that soon. But can you go all in YOLO on interest rate sensitive yet? No. 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 no, no. Now, of course, you're going to get the manipulation, right? You're going to get the Elon Musk. Oh, well, we're raising prices uh, March 25th. Prices are going to go up for the Model Y. All he's trying to do is pull demand forward into Q1 because he knows Q1 is poopy. And then they can always incentive away the price increase of the thousand bucks. They're just trying to imply that the price cuts are over. It might work. And I have to say version 12.3, much better. 
than 12.0, uh, much better than 12.1. It's actually very good. It, it's it's impressive. It's still, there's some moments where I'm like, what are you doing? It's getting much further in between, you know, each one of those sort of like, what, what is this uh, moments, which is good. It's still not obviously going to be uh, level five, but uh, in terms of uh, the autonomy, it's, it's the best on the road. Now, what does that actually mean in terms of uh, dollar hollas? Well, Deutsche Bank suggested maybe they're going to finally lower their FSD pricing once they wide roll out version 12. Well, that would be smart. They really need to cut the pricing, probably honestly, to like 5K. Now, unfortunately, I think Elon's going to get really stuck on this FSD number because he really believes in it so much. So he's going to end up going for like a 10K versus a 12K. And that's going to, of course, be a mistake because it's just not going to be enough. <sighs> Especially in these interest rate environments. <coughs> I think they just get rid of the upfront free fee and make it passive income. Sorry, your last chance to get in forever is now. Uh, and then the only way to get FSD is pay monthly. 99 bucks a month, whatever it is. Best SaaS business from auto ever. It'd be amazing. Uh, we just we just need a little fine tuning there. I mean, that's something that would get me really excited again. Uh, but anyway, we still need vehicular growth. So anyway, uh, we're starting to blend topics here. Okay, look, uh, this again, just to be like, uh, put this sort of nail in the coffin, this rejection there at 69 and then bouncing along this trend line here, this is telling you people are nervous about Powell, but they're not so nervous that, you know, if we go out on the day chart, yes, we've got the downtrend here. But again, you go back to the hour chart. Are we so, so nervous? No, this is barely, uh, barely considered, uh, you know, anything other than normal in Bitcoin. I do like using Bitcoin as sort of a leading indicator. I mean, look at this. Does that look like a correction to you? No. Could it be the start of something? Yeah. But again, I think you got a pretty neutral JPOW coming this week uh, with a slight hawkish tinge thanks to the uh, SEP. And then, yep, we still need more time to be data dependent. But um, these two inflation reports in a row and wage growth going up. I mean, we've talked about it in the other videos. I don't want to rehash it. But if you haven't seen it yet, watch those other videos. And you can actually see the data that's making me go. Me, Kevin, meet Kevin. is going, oh my God, what's happening? Yeah, okay, watch those other videos. Uh, anyway, so with that said, thank you so much for watching. Go to metkevin.com slash life to get life insurance in as little as five. Metkevin.com slash Weeble to use this beautiful stock platform I use all the time. You see it here? Watch what I could do now. You want to see something really cool? Not only can I now show you Weeble on Mac, but watch this, folks. Ready for this? One button. Boom! Magic! I've got Windows up, too! Let's go! Look at that 4090 GeForce RTX! Let's go! <laughs> uh, and then, of course, check out the Stocks and Psychology of Money for all my buy-sell alerts uh, from the uh, Stocks and Psychology of Money group. Of course, remember live streams and, of course, the event June 21st to 25th. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye and good luck. I want to advertise these things that you told us here. I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take. Even though I'm a licensed financial advisor, licensed real estate broker, and becoming a stockbroker, this video is not personalized advice for you. It is not tax, legal, or otherwise personalized advice tailored to you. This video provides generalized perspective, information, and commentary. Any third-party content I show shall not be deemed endorsed by me. This video is not and shall never be deemed reasonably sufficient information for the purposes of evaluating a security or investment decision. Any links or promoted products are either paid affiliations or products or services we may benefit from. I also personally operate an actively managed ETF. I may personally hold or otherwise hold long or short positions in various securities, potentially including those mentioned in this video. However, I have no relationship to any issuer other than Hausack, nor am I presently acting as a market maker. Make sure if you're considering investing in Hausack to always read the PPM at Hausack.com.